Um, let's go ahead and get started. So here's me. Um, I do work uh, for Garden Grove, as most of you know. And I've been at OTAN. This is going to be starting my fourth year pretty soon. And currently, I'm in Sacramento. I've been here since March, middle of March, when our school closed down. Not closed down, but closed. <laughs> All right, and here's the OTAN logo for inf more information. If you have any questions, support at OTAN.us. And again, here's that reiteration. So when you go to the OTAN.us, then you're going to go to this little field support. All right, so here's our agenda, short and simple and sweet. How can I use it and how can I use it? And I know you're thinking, um, Lisa, I think there might be a typo on there. You wrote the same thing twice. Trust me, you'll see why. All right, so I made a few um, videos. I'm trying to think what these are. Okay, so we're all gonna learn together. One of the ways to create a screencast so that your bookmark bars and your tabs at the top of your screen do not show up on your screencast is to select the browser tab when you first click on Screencastify. That way only what you want them to see is there. And if I'm on Google Slides, then I can easily click present and it becomes full screen. If you would like to start in full screen, then you would do alt shift and the letter R. And then that will start your recording and then Alt-Shift-R to stop your recording. Okay, so um, this was in um, as a follow-up to some of the previous questions about, you know, you have your tabs up at the top of your screen or you have your bookmarks, you know, across your screen on your computer. And if you make a screencast, then people can see what's actually on your screen. So that was um, a way to kind of work around not showing your bookmarks and your um, tabs. And then this one. So as you can see, I'm already in full screen and you can see the previous video that we just looked at. And all I did was hit Alt Shift R and the three second countdown begins and I'm doing my screencast. And then when I'm finished with it, then I just do Alt Shift. <laughs> so <laughs> you can tell that I didn't plan that very well because I stopped the video before I stopped talking. So um, Alt Shift R will be your best friend. Um, I, I have a little post-it note that says Alt Shift R right on my um, computer, right at my desk area, my work area, because I do use it quite a bit. Instead of going up to your screencast icon and then starting a video and ending a video there because it shows when you use a screen, you know, as your screencast, as you're recording, then I just do my alt shift R and then, then my mouse doesn't move. So that might be one way to work around um, having those extra little flit, you know, flinches and things um, not show. You can also trim those out too if it's at the beginning and at the um, end. Great. So let's try one more. If you don't want students or your participants to see them, but you need to go back and forth between tabs, um, is to go ahead and select desktop when you're starting your Screencastify. But before you actually do that, you want to hide your bookmarks. So if you come to the skinny snowman at the top next to your icon, you're going to click on bookmarks. And then where it says show bookmarks bar, go ahead and check that and it's unchecking it. So now my bookmarks are gone. And then if I didn't want students to see, you know, other tabs that I had at the top, remember you can pull your tab to the front and let go and it hides everything behind it. It's still there. You still have your things behind it, but now they're hidden. So it looks like you only have one tab open. So that's another way for you to hide your tabs and or your bookmarks if you don't want participants to see them. Okay, so those were a couple of the workarounds on how to hide bookmarks and your tabs. All right, so screencasts. <laughs> so screencasts is the, kind of the generic word for video recording. Um, it's like driving a car. If 
you have the basics down, you literally can go to any other tools that do video recordings and, and do them. Um, the basics are all the same. Now, some of them have other tools. Um, they may be placed in a different place, just like when you go to a, when you drive a car. I know how to drive a car, and if I get into your car, it's basically the same thing, but maybe some of the controls are in a different place, or you might have more functions than I do. That's just the way it goes. Some of them are better, some of them are not so good, but if you have the basics of how to make a recording, you can use other tools like Screencast-O-Matic, Loom, Screencastify. You know, they all do basically the same thing. They're just different um, programs. So when you finally do a screencast, whether it be with Screencastify or Screencast-O-Matic or Loom, these are different ways that you can share your videos. So you can email them, you can text, you can use a texting app like Remind and WhatsApp, you can use an LMS like Classroom and Moodle, and you can use websites like sites, Google Sites and Weebly. Um, and the ones with the asterisks, um, those are all covered. They're, they won't be covered today in today's session, um, but they do have it available in other webinars, um, how to upload things. Can Screencastify integrate inside a live Zoom like today? Um, yes, um, because I can show you how I can make a screencast, uh, screencast right now while we're in Zoom. So you can definitely make, but you have to be, you, you kind of have to have it planned in your head because whatever you're saying is going to be in that recording. But a lot of, um, and a lot of teachers have told me before that they've screencast a Zoom. Okay, two things. They they have done it, but um, to to record it so that they can send it to their students for later on, like in the actual Zoom, like if students had questions and things like that. But the other thing is that you have to keep in mind that Screencastify allows you to have five minutes. This is the free version. The, the basic um, account um, allows you to make uh, videos up to five minutes. If you would like to pay for um, the premium account, it's $29 a year for the educate for educators, and then you're unlimited. So if you actually wanted to, if you didn't have the option to record your Zoom uh, meeting or something, but you wanted to record it, um, then you can use Screencastify if you had the paid version. That was a good question. So email. Once you make your screencast and you get to the, the ending slide, you can send your screencasts straight from email. So screencasts get automatically saved into your drive. So in order to use Screencastify, for those who haven't been here yet, you, you must have a Google account. And so in order, once you make a screencast, because Screencastify is an extension, it's a Google extension, and you'll see on the top of my computer right here, I have it next to all my extensions. So it's readily available anytime. I can be on any tab, anything, um, and open this and a screen, I can start screencasting. Um, and so it, once you finish, you can go to more options and then send an email and then you can type in an email address of you know who you want to send the video to and send it off. And then I tried it today because I thought, hmm, I wonder if I can do a group well, I, because I have my students in a group. And instead of typing each one of their email addresses one at a time, I typed in my group name and it came up. So I can do it straight from Screencastify and send all my students the one video all at the same time. It was magical. I was super excited to find that today. If you happen to be in Gmail and you made a screencast before and you never sent it or you sent it before and now you want to send it to someone else, you're going to compose a new email and down here at the bottom, you're going to select your drive. Now, so here's the other thing too. And I, I've made this mistake because when I first started this, I had two different accounts. So my Screencastify account is connected to a different Gmail than my students' Gmail. And I mean, my account, my, the account that my students use for my Gmail. So I had to go back and forth. I was flipping back and forth. So I finally made another Screencastify account with the, other, with the Gmail account. So please, for, for just sake of, of being organized, you might want to consider making your Gmail account and your Screencastify account with the same email. That would help. And then you go here, you go into your drive 
you find your screencast, you insert and you send. It's as easy as that. So before today, when I didn't know that I could do it straight from Screencastify, I was coming here and then I was typing in my group and then I was in, uh, inserting the screencast here and then sending it to my students. So either way, it works. It, it, they both work the same way. Text. I, I played around with this with my boyfriend and we figured it out how to do it. Um, you can send a text uh, with the, the link when you are, uh, let me see if I have it back. When you get the, the shareable link, then you just paste it into, oh, I'm sorry, when you're on your phone, when you're on, okay, so when you're on your phone, you cannot make a screencast, but you can send and receive a screencast. So when you are on your phone, you go to your drive, okay? So go to the Google Drive app, find your screencast, click on the skinny snowman, and then click on copy link and then go back to your text, whom, whomever you want to text. And then for me, I pushed my finger down in the texting message place and then it said paste and I just pasted it there. So I, I, I don't, I assume it's probably the same process for everybody, but maybe just different, it looks differently or different functions. But you can copy and paste a link on your phone. And then I sent one to, um, an Android and it was it was super easy friendly. They got the text, they clicked on the link, they I think he had to, um, it asks do you want to open it with Chrome or do you want to open it with the with your email address or something. He clicked email and it was it opened no problem. I sent it to Blair with an iPhone and she said it was just like that too. He clicked on the, the link, it asked you a question, you click on it and then or which account do you want to open with and then she was able to open the the video right then and there. <clears throat> so with um, either an Android or a, an iPhone, it was pretty easy to text. So <laughs> yesterday I was working on this presentation and I was amazed because I think um, Screencastify really listens to feedback. So if you have any suggestions for them, like I wish it could da da da, or it would be so cool if it could da da da, there is a little place right here is to suggest it because all of a sudden there are now share buttons with Edpuzzle, Wakelet, and Remind. So they must have gotten a lot of feedback about this because when I after I did the second Screencastify session, Edpuzzle came up and we kind of talked about it in the third one, but I wasn't too familiar with Edpuzzle, but it's, it's um, making quizzes with videos. And it was kind of cool. I opened up an account, I tried it. But then now yesterday, all of a sudden I saw Wakelet and Remind. So for those of you who are using Remind, this is just one more step easier for you to make a video, send it through Remind, and get it to all your students. So I thought that was pretty amazing. So again, if you have other platforms that you use besides Classroom, YouTube, email, and these, set, click right there. It's under the Add More Share Options. Add More Share Options, and then click here and send it to them. I mean, who knows? Maybe someday in the future, you'll see whatever it was that you asked for on their list. So that was cool. All right, so here's that first one. How can I use it? So what I mean by that is when. When can I use screencasts? So you can use screencasts for communication. This is what we were talking about. Some of you had written um, in the chat about your motivation for using it. It's, it's just a way for you to communicate with your students. Um, if you're not doing Zoom or Meet or some sort of video conferencing with them, I mean, it's now been about three months that you haven't seen them and more importantly, they haven't seen you. So if you can make some videos just so they can see your face and feel connected and hear your voice, oh my gosh, it's magical and they're so appreciative of it. Um, you can use it for information. You can make how to's um, and instructional. So if you're teaching, um, if you're talking about grammar, we'll, we'll, you'll see an example later on. But um, if you're doing some sort of grammar lesson or a math lesson or something, then instead of a how to like click here and go here and use this website, you're actually doing instruction like you were on a whiteboard. And then feedback. 
whether it be personal feedback to your students one on one, maybe with their homework or something like that, or collaborative, maybe you're working with um, colleagues on a project. And so you can give some feedback um, with them on a video instead of typing everything and typing your comments out, which is fine. But if you just kind of made a video, then they can actually see sometimes um, text or docs, um, texting or word processing. The it gets lost in translation sometimes if you if you type it some way with the intonation in your head and then somebody else reads it a little bit differently that could be kind of awkward sometimes so if you made a video they can hear exactly how you're saying it and say oh that that's what she meant by that so let's start talking about screencast okay so let's talk about how to add it to an email so let me come up here maria i'm just thinking about you i hope you're doing okay i love you bye could you hear that? I don't know if you could hear that. Yes. Okay, good. So that was just a quick like four second uh, video that I made to Maria and I'm just going to send it off to her and she's going to open it and go, oh my gosh, my teacher is thinking about me and that was so sweet. And you know, it could have been a blanketed like, hi students, and I could have sent it to all the students and they would have been just fine. But you know, every once in a while, because my online class since we've closed school is so small now, it really doesn't take that much longer to make one for every one of my students. So every once in a while, I don't do it a lot, but every once in a while I will just say, hey, you know, hi, I'm thinking about you, you know, I hope you're well. All right, so here's where the hands-on practice comes in, and I'm hoping this is going to work, and um, you will be my guinea pigs. So I am said about three minutes, but again, you know, I don't know how long it's going to take. We'll see. The goal is that you're going to email or text me a screencast. So you're going to create a very short one, make it super small, and title it with your first and last name. Be sure your setting is on public or unlisted. When you finish, check over here and make sure that it doesn't I think it defaults to private. mine defaults to private so I need to check either public or enlisted I've made all of mine public because I really don't care who sees them I mean more power to them if somebody wants to watch my my screencasts they're on my drive so I don't I don't even know when when they would do it but just to be sure I just made it public but if you want to make it unlisted I think that's fine also Alisa while we're waiting for that um, we have a question sure my drive has two copies of each screencast, one very large and one small, MP4. Do I need to keep both? Are they, and that's unusual, I mean, did you, okay, so my question would be when you finished your um, recording, did you save it as an MP4? Because they will automatically save as, an, as a WebM which doesn't really take up a lot of space. So unless you actually purposefully um, selected um, save as an MP4, and but if it's making two of them, one might be an MP4 and one might be the WebM. So it might, because when you do that, it will, it will save as. So you'll have the original and you'll have whatever you saved it as. So no, you don't necessarily need to have both unless you want to have one of each. Double check to see if your one of them is a WebM. You'll see WebM at the end or M1 as an MP4. Um, just wondered if I can do Alt-Shift-R on a Mac. I think it's Command-Shift-4. I, I don't have a Mac, but I think the Alt Oh, is Alt the same as Command? Alt Linda? is actually, I believe it's either going to be Option or Control. So oh, sorry, I, I'm using the wrong lingo. I have it in my head what it looks like, but I don't know what the word is. Right. <laughs> and it's probably the Option key, the person that's asking. Um, so try the Control Shift R. And if that doesn't work, try the Option shift r i think you're right yeah I, I remember seeing it when it has it on the list for max i think it does say option okay. i'm going to show people how to do this okay so i am in um I'm, I'm here right now so i'm going to open up a new tab okay and i'm going to select my screencast i'm going to record um, I'm going to also, let me see here. You also want to make sure that you have the system audio. If you have sound, if you're recording a video or uh, some sort of audio, make sure that this is also selected. So that's another one. Oopsie. And I'm going to record. 
I'm going to choose my screen. I hear my beeps. Hi, this is a sample video. I'm going to stop recording. Okay, so this is what happens. This is the default. As soon as it, as soon as you finish, this is what happens. If you need, it always defaults to unmute. So if you want to listen to it. Hi, this is a sample video. <laughs> okay, so here's my sample video. I'm going to write. So I'm going to send in email, send in email. Remember, it, my video already went to Drive. I don't even have to worry about that. And because I'm sending it from Screencastify, I don't even have to get it from Drive. I'm going to send it to myself because I love myself so much. OK, here's the link. Check out this video. I didn't even have to write all that. OK, and I'm going to send it. Check. There you go. One, two, three. It was sent. So if I go into my email, which is in a different screen, sorry, I'm not going to be able to show you, then I have an email from me about me. It's all about me. Okay, so um, that's how you do it. So I would also, my, my thinking is, my suggestion to you is that you name your screencasts as soon as you can, because it will do untitled and then the date and the timestamp. But if you forget, it's just going to say untitled, 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 and you're going to have a bunch of untitles, and then you're going to have to go through all of them to see which one it was. So question. Sure. Can each screencast be customized graphically to give students a feel that your virtual room is really yours? For example, Mr. C's ESL workshop with picture of me, photos, etc. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that question means. So um, could someone start their screencast every time with the same slide? Oh, yes. If it was like kind of an introduction, like, you know, like now your students know that they're going to be watching this. Yeah, if, if you're in Google Slides, if you're always doing a Google Slide or just have the Google Slide as your as your opening screencast and then and then move on to whatever it is that you're going to be teaching or showing, uh, you could do that. If you have the premium version, not the free version, you can actually trim in the middle of a video. With the basic, the free version, you can only trim the beginning or the end. So if you have um, lagging time at the beginning or if you don't want to show that you're moving your mouse to end the recording, you can trim those off. But with the paid, if you had like your opening slide but now you're transitioning into another tab and you don't really want students to see that, you can trim that in the middle. Amelia says, you started with select screencast icon, record, choose screen. Oh, okay. Good question. Okay, so let me go back up here. So let me, I choose, I mean, I selected Screencastify. So now you want to choose if you're going to use browser tab, which is just, you're going to stay in the same place the whole time. Let's say it's a Google Slides. You want to record your presentation. Just click on browser tab. You're going to stay in one place. If you're going to be moving around from tab to tab, like I did, I went from uh, new tab to email or and back and forth, then I want to use desktop. If I just wanted to do a webcam only, like a selfie video, then you would just click on the webcam uh, option. You could just choose that. And then the camera option is already done. Here, you can decide, do you want your webcam on or off? And then same with this one. Do you want your webcam on or off? Because you can show your screen plus yourself at the same time. And the, the, in the um, example that Jacqueline sent me, she had her screen plus she had her face and was talking to me. So, so you have that option. Um, one of the things that we talked about before in previous screen uh, sessions was that really be mindful of the focus. If you're showing something for your students and you really want them to focus on the information that's on the screen, don't have your webcam on because they're obviously just going to be watching you and not really like if you're pointing to something or showing something. So you can toggle back and back and forth. So you want you maybe you welcome them. Hi students, we're going to learn about fractions today. Okay, let's get started. Turn your webcam off and then show them the the information and then maybe put it back on okay so hopefully you got it and if you didn't you know email me and then you end it so you can be just be a little bit mindful about when to use your webcam and when not to use your webcam 
So let's talk about it, how you can use this for information. Again, we talked about you can use it for how to's and for instructionals. So it's um, really kind of up to you how you decide how you want to use your Screencastify. So here's a video. Okay, students, first thing I want you to do when you open a new Google Doc is to name it. So let's go ahead and type your name and your ID number. Not my name, your name and your ID number. Next, I would like you to put your name, type your name on the document itself one more time. And your ID number. So right here, I'm going to hit enter. Enter goes down one line. And enter one more time. Next, you're going to type your vocabulary words. Number one, living room. Number two, kitchen. And you're going to finish the line. So after you type, you hit enter, and the number automatically comes up. It's like magic. So finish your vocabulary. Okay. So that is a typical how-to. I'm instructing my students how to do something. I'm doing it step by step in chronological order and I'm showing them by example how to do that. The next one is going to be informational. Okay, let's keep practicing with our prepositions. Let's take a look at the sentence number one. The dog is in the park on the grass. All right, the dog is in the park on the grass. Where do you think is the preposition? Remember, prepositions are take, where are they? In the park and on the grass. So let's take a look. The dog is in the park on the grass. So let me get my pen and let's take a look at this. The dog is in the park on the grass. So those are your prepositions. Those are your prepositions. Okay, so I'm going to stop that real quick. So that wasn't an how to. It was I wasn't showing them how to do something. I was showing them information about this particular grammar point. So you you as the instructor are now trying to think, okay, so what is it that I want to send my students? Am I sending them a how to, like how to get into Google Classroom or how to make a Google Doc or how to use a certain website? Or are you just doing instruction as if they were in your class and you were showing them on the whiteboard what it is that you want to teach? Very quickly, so let's go ahead and let me open up a new tab just so we don't get confused on where we are. So I'm in just a tab, let's just say, and I'm going to start my screencast. Okay, and I'm going to choose desktop because I'm going to switch around to something else. And I want to, okay, so I'm going to start with my webcam on and then I'll show you how to turn the webcam off. Hi everyone, this is me and so, um, I don't see my screencast toolbar. It's usually at the bottom over here, but I think again is because I'm in Zoom, but I think I can do control T or alt shift T. <laughs> one, of the, one of the shortcut keys will bring up the tab bar and then you can put your video on and off. And I think I can do that too. So I'm still, I'm still recording, but I don't have my video on anymore. All right, so let's see how that worked. Oh, okay, so let me turn on the news. Um, I don't see my screencast toolbar. It's usually at so the bottom my... over here, but I think again is because I'm in Zoom, but I think I can do Control T or Alt Shift T. <laughs> one, of the, one of the shortcut keys will bring up the tab bar and then you can put your video on and off. And I think I can do that too. So I'm still, I'm still recording, but I don't have my video on anymore. So when you're in normal situation, in normal 
circumstances, if you're not on Zoom and you're just making a screencast, and you can try it right now. When you start, um, when you start recording, you should see a toolbar on the bottom left-hand corner. Now, again, so just in case, if you do and you're like, Alisa, I don't see that toolbar, make sure that you have this show drawing tools on there. Okay, so if for some reason that is toggled off and you say, Lisa, I can't find that toolbar, just double check to make sure that's on and it should come up. Um, oh, okay, and also the tools will not show up if the site is not live. So if you're on a new tab, you have to be on a, on a screen that's live. That might be the difference also. So we'll, we'll practice more with that. We have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, can Screencastify import a PDF lesson file, like a list of words for pronunciation, and then record the teacher guiding students through oral practice using annotations pointer at the same time? Okay, so you wouldn't import into Screencastify, you would make a screencast of that PDF. So open up that PDF, open up the PDF and then click on Screencastify, and then you'll have, you know, select the screen that has the PDF on it, and then you can do the oral um, words or pronunciation for that screencast. And the annotation pointer? If I had this PDF and I wanted to go over the words with them first, then I can go ahead and select Screencastify, and then I can hit record. Let me make sure that it's, everything's on, yes. And I'm going to choose my screen. Okay, students, so we're going to talk about the flag of the United States. And let's go over the words 13, 50. And be careful, I want you to make sure that you are pronouncing died. Yeah, died with your D, died with the D. So make sure you have good pronunciation. Flag of the United States, and let's go over the words 13, 50, and be careful. I want you to make sure that you are pronouncing died. Yeah, died with your D, died with a D. So make sure you have good pronunciation. And what do I do if the share button doesn't respond? I click the share bon button and it's not responding. Um, okay, so let me go back up here. Let me see if we're in the same place. So I come here and um, here if I, okay, so make sure that you click. Okay, so I, um, I, it's on another screen for me, but once you click here and you hit record, it's going to ask you, oops, sorry. <laughs> Hang on, sorry. Oh, of course. It's going to ask you which screen you want. And before you can hit share, you have to select one of the screens. So click on one of your options. What do you want to share? And then the, the share button should um, be possible. So feedback. This has probably been one of the best things that I've used Screencast for. It has saved me a lot of time because my students send me their homework and they, they take a photo, they do it on paper and then they take a photo and then they send it to me and then I was emailing them, you know, like, oh, remember, you know, don't, you know, remember capital at the beginning, period at the end, and I'm typing it all out. But with a video, I can actually just look at their paper and talk and say their comments, uh, you know, for them and specifically for them. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Here in this example of how to... Oh, no. <laughs> I have too many toolbars open. I'm sorry. <laughs> Here in this example of how to grade somebody's homework and give feedback. So for example, my student Kung sends some homework and I'm going to open up my email and open up her email, uh, her homework. And I don't really need to open any of this stuff. Um, I'm not sure if you realize that, but you can just go ahead and I'm just zooming into it and I can move and I can look at it. 
So if I were doing a screencast for her, I would say, thank you so much, Com, for your homework. I love it. So let's take a look and see how you did. Who is cooking? Perfect. Make sure maybe make your W a little bit bigger. Yeah, so let's make the W a little bit bigger so it's bigger than the H question mark very good the man is cooking in the kitchen period excellent great job so these all look very very good now let's take a look at number four number four who is doing so let's take a look at this now who is doing let's rethink this she is doing empty the dishwasher so let me tell you, empty is the verb. Empty is the verb. Sometimes we use doing for other verbs, but we actually have the verb empty. So we can go ahead and say, she is emptying the dishwasher. So let's take a look at the question. Who is emptying the dishwasher? who is emptying the dishwasher. So let me grab my pen real quick and I can take out doing and we can put in emptying with an ing the dishwasher question mark. Perfect. Then answer she is emptying the dishwasher with a period. So maybe can we go through and you look at the rest and check to see if everything else is great. Then you can send this back to me. Okay, so uh, you know, that was just an example. And, and I was laughing because I forget the toolbar all the time. I forget that it's there. So as you can see, I was using my mouse pointer and that's usually what I do. But then I kind of realized, oh yeah, I have a pen. I can use the pen. So that's just me, I forget. But it is really helpful and handy. And I can also use the spotlight as well. And that helps focus where, where it is that I'm talking and she can, um, she can see where I'm at. So that's, that's the feedback. So one of the things, just to step on my little pedestal a little bit, is what I've learned, which was really valuable, I learned this a long time ago, is that really try hard not to use negative words in, in, in general. I think, I think I read like The Secret, or I watched the videos the secret and the, the point was not to put negative energy out into the universe and so to try to always use positive statements. So instead of uh, don't forget your capital then just say remember your capital things like that so I, I really try I mean of course I mess up and I forget a lot but um, I, I really try hard to to use positive languages language and words in my feedback um, and in, in general as well <laughs> but I do forget because it's very easy for us to to say don't do this don't do that instead of remember to do this um, if anybody teaches uh, ESL or, or any class um, I challenge you to have your students make their class rules without negative uh, phrases. I did this when I taught advanced ESL and we made, I told them to make 10 rules for the classroom and it was instantly, you know, like, don't chew gum, don't use your cell phone, don't, you know, speak your language. And I said, let's go ahead and let's rethink this in positives. We can't use don't and we can't use no. So then they said, speak English only in the classroom. Um, use your cell phone outside, you know, things like that. It really kind of changed their thinking on how they perceived things and how they said things with each other and with me. So just, you know, just food for thought. Okay, so now you have my homework. I am your student and I'm so excited because I sent you my homework and I have some problems. There are some issues that, that need to be changed. So I'm going to go to my screencast up here at the very top, go to your icon and then you're going to record. And I'm going to change choose, I'm going to choose the screen that has this document on it and share. Hi, Elisa. Thank you for turning in your homework. It looks good. So let's make some changes. Remember your name. Your name is very important. So we need to make not a small one. 
not a small a lowercase, we need to change that to a capital, a capital. Your name is very important. Also your last name, capital T, okay? You entered here, excellent. You did your ID number, very good. So now we have our sentences. The dog walking on the park. So what do we need right there? What did we forget? And then don't forget your verb, blah, blah, blah. And then you stop recording. And then you're going to email it to me, send it in an email. Okay, you can, uh, oh, sorry, you're gonna, you can, you can name it too. So Lisa's Homer, or whatever your, yeah, your, your, your name. Lisa's homework. You bet. So whenever I make a, a screencast for you, if I'm giving you feedback or, or following up on a question, I always type your name in it so that if I have to go back and look at it again, I know who, who you know, which one's which. So collaboration, remember collaboration is um, between colleagues or with your students. If you have uh, one document for all of your students, or one document for all of your colleagues, then you can give feedback um, through that. So let's take a look. Hi everyone, thanks so much for the document. Um, the list looks great. Um, for my input, I would really like to work on the classroom and uh, the teacher guide and the student guide. So if you don't mind, I'm going to put my name next to that. Um, if anybody else would like to work with me on this, or if you feel passionate about working on it, um, just let me know. We can talk about it. Thanks. So this was a document that was shared um, on a team at my school, and I was explaining that this is the, the sections that I would prefer to work on, but sometimes if I typed it out like, I want to do Google Classroom, the teacher guide and the student guide, um, some of my colleagues could take that as like, I'm doing it and you're not, and I claimed it and you don't get to do it, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I kind of wanted to just let them know with my tone of voice that, hey, you know, this is, this is what I would like to work on. And if you want to work on it with me, that's great, you know, and, but, or, it, you know, if you, if you want to do it and you don't want me to do it, then let's talk about it, you know, just to kind of give it some tone and some, some, um, inference of, of where I was coming from. So that was uh, a screencast that I could use for my colleagues. And then here's another one. So I just made that screencast with um, this document and I gave my input. And so now I want to add it to this document so that when other people from this committee look at the document, they can also see my comment. So I'm going to add a comment here and I'm going to paste that URL that I got from Screencast and I'm going to make my comment. And so now when other people look at the document, they can see that I have made a video on there and they can click on that and watch the video. That's how you can use um, Screencastify for collaboration. Okay, so I was explaining about the document and I was making my screencast and now this is how I add it to the document. So let me show you how we're going to do it. So bit.ly screencastify collaboration. So new tab, bit.ly forward slash screencastify collaboration. Enter. And you can see that we have about seven people right now in the same document. And you can see where people are, um, have their cursors. Okay. So if they're making their screencasts right now, you would, you can either highlight a certain point. I want to do this part. And then you can hit some screencast and do your, you can actually do that afterwards too. So go into screencast, make your video, and then get the shareable link. And then you're going to go to the comments. 
as you can see, when people highlight, you, there's a little bit, oh no, sorry, not this one. When you highlight, you can get the comments and you can make, you can copy and paste your URL for the, right here, the comment is next to the link. So mine was a little hidden because my screen is so big. So I go to the melted snowman and then look for the comments. It's right next to the link right here. And then you're going to add your comment. Click on that and then it goes into the comments. <laughs> Marjorie. Marjorie was practicing with me yesterday. <laughs> There's no need to share. There's no need to do anything after you make your your screencast and then you copy it into the doc. You can just let it go because we all have access to this document. So I can see all the comments that are made and you can see each other's as well. Alisa, is there a way to keep out the noise of typing or clicking when you're creating your video? <laughs> Unfortunately, um, no, it's, there's probably, I probably do that too. I'm, I'm uh, I'm guilty of that. Um, one of the things that was so intriguing about Google Meet is that you can actually, it filters out those background noises when you're on Google Meet instead of Zoom. And so if somebody is typing, if you are typing or you, know, you don't hear the little background noise, so I, I thought oh, that's, pretty, that's a pretty good tool. Too bad other people don't um, adopt that. <laughs> All right, so now how can I use it? So there's the part two. Well, hopefully it's not part two, but um, it's how can I use it? So we've already talked about docs. We've done a lot of practice with them. Um, you can link, you, know, you can make a comment like we just practiced. You can make it a link. So you just type in whatever it is you wanna say and then you type in the link and then you can make it a link for them to watch instead. So that's how you can incorporate it into Google Docs. You can make it in slides, okay? Um, same thing if you're on Google Slides, you insert video, go to your drive, select your video, and that's how you put it right on your slide. So let me just do this real fast. I'm so this is an example of how to embed a screencast right into your slide. So open up Google Slides and then choose your layout. So I'm going to make it, this one so that I can just type something in here if I'd like. And then I'm going to insert and video. And then, so you have your choices. You can do it by a YouTube, by a URL, or by Google Drive. So since Screencastify saves all of the videos in Google Drive, you can find all of the videos here. So if I just choose any one, then I'm going to hit select. And then there it is. And I can maneuver it around. I can change the size. If it's too small and you want to make it full size. And when you go into present, then it becomes full size. So it doesn't necessarily need to be um, as big as the screen. Okay, so um, because we're starting to really run out of time now, um, you can practice. If you want to open up a new tab, you can go to Screencastify Slides Practice, and you can do this after the session too. This will, all, this will be up for you to practice anytime. So bit.ly forward slash Screencastify Slides with an S, practice, slides practice. And I think I can show you what it looks like. I think it's this one. So you're going to look for an empty slide and I made 50 of them. So there's plenty of them. I mean, you just come down here and choose any one you want that's empty. And then think of how you would like to use this with your students or colleagues and then pretend that you're making a slide to, to give to your students or colleagues, okay? So you would make your screencast, insert it into the slide and then, sh and then I would share it, okay? And then, this is the one that was kind of a game changer for me. Um, I really wanted to make some listening because I teach beginning ESL. I wanted to make more listening practices for them. So um, I figured out a way, and there was some steps to it, but it's, it's doable to make an image with audio. So if I click here. 
this is an example of how you can put audio only into your slide. Okay, so I chose an image and then I embedded the, the audio into the picture so that my students can just click and then they would listen to whatever it is that I wanted to show them. So I think this one is a really good one. So uh, let me show you how I did it. Okay, so I'm in Google Slides and I'm ready to create a slide that my students will look at and when they click on a picture, they will hear something. So maybe this would be a good practice for an oral assignment or a role play or maybe even just a listening assignment. So first things I'm going to do is that I'm going to insert an image and I'm going to search for it on Google and I'm going to select receptionist and I'm just going to take this little cartoon and insert okay so when the students see the slide they will see this picture and the idea is that when they click on it they're going to hear a question and then they're going to practice the answer so next thing I have to do is I have to make the audio for what they will hear. Hi, welcome. How can I help you? Okay, so when the students see this picture, they clicked on it and then they heard the receptionist talk. All right, so I just finished the recording of what I want the receptionist to say. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to title this, let's type receptionist. Oops, I think I can make this bigger. Okay, and then I'm going to export audio only. Export audio only. So it's in the download. So you'll see download, click on that, and then export audio only. And what will that will do is it will download, I'm on a PC, so it will download to my computer, but it also downloads to your drive. So I'll click save, and I won't have to worry about it again. I won't have to look for it on my computer because it also went to my drive. So I go back to my slide. So I want to insert the audio so that the receptionist will talk when the students click on it. So let's see, we're going to insert audio. And didn't quite, there it is. So there's receptionist. I'm going to select. Now, as you can see, it comes up as a little uh, volume icon right here. And that's, a fi that's fine. If you want to leave it there, your students can click on the play and listen to it, and that's fine. But what I like to do is I like to go ahead and hide it behind the picture so that the students will click on the image and then here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this right over here on top of her. And don't worry, we're going to fix this. And again, it doesn't really matter what it looks like, but I really want to try to make it so that it's about the same size as the image so that if the students click anywhere, then it will play. Now, of course, I'm not going to leave it like this. So I'm going to right click and then I'm going to order it to the back. So I'm going to change the order and I'm going to send it to the back and then it's in the back. So you can kind of see it a little bit, not too badly though, um, nothing, you know, too, too bad. I, I can always move my, you know, I can manipulate it a little bit. So, it, you know, you really can't see it that badly. And what I want to do is now I want to group this in case the students click on it and move, then, then it's going to move because it's still back there. You can still see it. And so then what I want to do is I'm going to click outside of both images and see how it creates both of them at the same time. I'm going to come up here to arrange and then I'm going to group. So now when I click off of it, if I move this, both images move at the same time. Okay, so if I go ahead and present, my students are going to practice now. I click on the receptionist 
sorry, you can't hear that. And I'm then the students would know, um, I would like a student ID card or, you know, whatever it is that you would like them to practice. And this could be a restaurant. She could say, hi, welcome to McDonald's. How can I help you? And the students would say, I would like a number one, please. You know, whatever it is that you're trying to have them practice, that would be a good way to, to do this. Sorry about that audio. To hear her, to hear the receptionist thing, it was, hi, welcome, how can I help you? And then the students would listen and practice that. Okay. So let's practice, <laughs> okay? So there's, there's a couple moving parts here that you're going to need to do. Um, you're going to open up a new tab and you're going to type in bit.ly screencastify slides practice number two with the number two bit.ly screencastify slides with an s practice number two you're going to insert an image choose the image record your screencast so there's a whole bunch of different moving parts here so let's go ahead and we'll walk through it together so I'm going to open up a new tab, bit.ly forward slash screencastify, oops, cast of castify slides practice two. Enter. Okay. And you should see that there are lots and lots of empty slides choose one anyone you like i'm going to come down here i'll go to number 13 and i'm going to insert image from the web insert image from the web i'm going to type whatever image i want so maybe I'm going to type in dog. Oh, little doggies. Oh, I'll choose the one with the money. Choose the picture that you would like and hit insert. Click on insert. Okay. I'm going to resize this a little. If you want to change the layout, if you don't like this layout, go to slide, apply layout, and then you can choose whichever one. You can make a blank one. There's blank one on the bottom. There's caption on the bottom. There's caption on the top. Whichever one you choose, I usually tend to like this one or blank is fine. So now you're going to do your screencast. It doesn't matter what this looks like because nobody's going to see it. So go ahead and make your screencast whatever sentence or whatever it is you want your students to hear. After you are finished, you're going to insert audio. Insert audio. And then find your audio in your drive. There was my receptionist one. I could do that one again. Um, they will give you some options here. It, do you want the audio to start on click? Do you want it to start automatically? Do you want it to loop? Stop when you change slides. So you have some options here also. This is Google slide options. The icon defaults to someplace on the slide. If you like it there, that's okay. If you want to do what I did and put it behind the, the image, you're going to move it on top of the image and resize it to about the same size as your image. So my audio is approximately the same size as my picture of the dog. I'm going to right click, order, send it to the back. So let's do that again. Right, so on your image, click on your image, I'm mean, sorry, click on your audio, audio, right click, order to the back. 
So you can still see I have my audio here, but it's behind my doggy picture. Okay, so I still have two. Here's my audio, here's my dog. They're two separate files. What I like to do is I like to group them because I want to make sure when the students click and if they're in this, if they're not in presentation mode, they might click this and then it's moving and then they do all, you know, it just kind of moves all this stuff and I don't really like that. So I'm going to click off, off of the picture and the audio and I'm going to group them together. It doesn't have to be fancy. And what that does is it groups both of them together, go to arrange up at the top, arrange and group. So now when I move, I've got both. Okay. If you made a mistake, if you notice that something's wrong, you don't really like it, you can always go back and arrange, oopsie, and ungroup. And then, oops, you'll have two separate ones again. So let's try that again. So I'm my audio is behind my dog. I select off of there. I select both. It's really important that you don't, you're outside of both images. So that it groups it together, arrange, group. And now I can move it wherever I want. If I present, then the students will, oops. Oh, okay. Well, sorry, when I did my presentation, I mean, when I did my audio, I didn't, I set it to private. That was the other thing. So again, remember every time you do your, your audios that you set it on public or unlist so that you can keep using it. Um, you can make the sound. So I actually made my own mistake. So I can see, we can all see each other's, this is a collaborative uh, slide. So somebody used the same image I did. Nice. Oh, kitty cat. So I'm hoping that this will help you to kind of start thinking like, like the box is now open and you're like, oh my gosh, I could use it for this and I can use it for that. And it's gonna be so cool because now I can do this. That's what this whole session is about is really just to open up your eyes to see, yeah, this tool is great, but then what more can I do with it? Um, forms. So you can do the same concept with forms with, um, I made a listening test because that's one of the big things now is just trying to make like tests using forms, but you can't um, really, you can't insert like an audio file. So you have to save it to YouTube. Okay, so with forms, Google Forms, it is possible. It's very advanced. I mean, there's a lot of parts and you have to have a YouTube account. You know, there's a lot of things that go with that. Um, but but if you can if you can work with it, it's worth it. So make your screencast, publish it to YouTube, and then when you're in forms, okay, once you're in forms, then you're going to insert it. So here's, hi, welcome. How can I help you? And then, what is the correct answer? I'm fine, thank you. I would like a student ID, please. You know, so the students listen to the question and then they have to choose which, which would be a good answer. So I know that your brains are just going crazy. The, the wheels are spinning, I could tell, because this is how I would be. If I was watching this right now, my wheels would be spinning on all the things that I could do um, with listening and Google Slides. So you can see it is a YouTube video. So you have to have a um, an account. And also this right here, I just wrote listening test, Q, you know, question one, it's not a very good title. Be mindful of how you title your videos when you save them to YouTube because it will show up. So you might, you know, change this to be more appropriate for your students. A question <laughs> about the settings for public or unlisted, is that in Google or in Screencastify? It's in Screencastify. Uh, so let me go to Screencastify. Uh, let me go to one of my recordings. So once you're done with the uh, uh, screencast, then you come here to more options and see how mine defaults to private. I want to change it to either public or unlisted. I usually, for, for this purposes, I usually try to go public. And I thought I went through all of my videos to do it because I forgot and so I had to check all my videos again. But I think with public, for me, um, it, it, 
it just doesn't matter that if anybody watches it, I, I'm just excited if anybody wants to watch them. They're, they're, you know, there's nothing personal in them or anything. So, um, but you know, if you have some issues that you just want, you only want people who have the link to view it, then you definitely should choose that. So, okay, here's, here's um, the audio question. Uh, I found the audio, but have no idea how to attach it. It doesn't look like the image you had, it's a bar. Oh, oh, it might be because um, maybe it got minimized too small. It maybe look like a try to grab one of the corners of just try to grab it. And if you see two diagonal arrows, then drag your drag your mouse away and see if that makes it a bigger image. It may just have shrank down. It may have resized by accident. There was no corner. Uh, you might try double clicking the the icon or the bar that you see as well when you double click that makes magic happen so you see how mine's super super tiny right here i mean if i you know if you make it any kind of small i mean just it starts getting kind of crazy so i just try to look for an arrow that goes both directions and then i try to make it bigger so then now i can manipulate it faster I don't know if that helps or not. Yeah, sometimes if we're playing with it. I had some problems too. It depends on my um, image. Like it was co coming in over here in the corner. Let me see if I could try to, I don't know if I could see how it's like, I, I can't really manipulate it because this thing is there. I just had to kind of really play with it and make it as big as I could and then try to move it. It, you know, it was kind of, it could be kind of difficult sometimes. Let's see, so sometimes my, my play button is covering it, so. Yeah, sometimes you just have to um, work with it. 